Hi, I'm Vicky. I'm glad you're here. Today I'm going to be showing you two cards using resist watercolour technique. I'm going to use my XL Canson watercolour pad, which is my favourite pad for card making, 9 inch by 12 inch sheets. And I'm going to cut them down to size for this project. I'm using two sheets and I'm going to use some clear embossing powder, some Versamark ink, and an embossing buddy or powder tool, and my heat gun, as well as some paints. And I'm going to use some Ganzai Tambi paints by Kuritaki, but any watercolor paints would do for this. I'm cutting the first sheet in half at the six inch mark and then scoring it halfway again. So this is my first card shape. And then the second card I'm going to turn into a slimline card. So I'm going to cut it to eight inches by eight inches square. I'll just bring that down so you can see a little better at the eight inch mark. And then turn it 90 degrees and trim down to eight inch square. You have a small piece like this that's useful for using as a greeting and another size that you could use for a front panel on a slimline card. But I'm just folding that at the four inch mark and then I have an eight inch by four inch slimline card. I'm going to be using this stamp here from Stampin' Up. This is from the Lots of Love stamp set. And I'm going to be using this stamp set here by Pink Fresh Studios. This is designed by Ina Moreva and this is the Brushed Sentiments stamp. I'm going to use birthday wishes on the slimline card. So I have my stamp positioner ready and I'm going to go with the slimline card first, pop that in with some magnets and line up birthday wishes across the center of the front. And I want to take some time to line this up so that I have about the same distance top and bottom and side to side. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm going to pick that up on the positioner door. And I'm going to be using my clear embossing powder and a sheet of printer paper that I've just folded in half to catch the powder. My Versamark ink and most importantly the embossing tool or embossing buddy powder tool whatever you have to use to remove any oils from my hands or any dust that may have settled on the front of that card now i'm going to use my versamark ink it's nice and juicy i've just re-inked it and i'm going to pat that over the stamp close the door of my stamp positioner and use my Speedball Baron as a stamp glider, or you could just press it with your hands as I'm doing here. Now there's not much to see here because it is a clear ink, so you can't see the image until I pour some embossing powder over the top and it begins to show up. So there's birthday wishes. However, I did get quite a blob of powder at the very edge there where I'm showing you now. So I have a technique for getting rid of that. I'm going to flick the back of the card. Then I'm going to bring in an angle shader brush that I keep specifically for this purpose with all my embossing tools and just carefully brush away that excess. Brushing away from the edge. There's still quite a little bit there. So I'm going to take my time and just brush that off very carefully. So that was where I picked up the card. So obviously the embossing buddy, um, I hadn't taken it all the way to that end. And it's, that's, that's why it's so important to be vigilant when you're doing that embossing buddy technique of using a powder bag. Now that's looking pretty good. So that goes back into the pot, lid goes on so I don't blow that all over the desk when I <laughs> turn my heat tool on. And I'm going to start on the back so that it doesn't buckle too much. And you're really not going to be able to see much of this on camera because we're embossing clear powder onto 
a cream colored background. But what you need to look for when you're doing this yourself is watch to see this, the melting take place. It's actually starting to melt the powder now and you're going to end up with something that looks wet and sticky. And that's what you're looking for. You can see it's starting to show that sticky shine now. It doesn't show up very well on camera. And while I was doing it, it didn't show up that well either. I just had to keep moving it around so it would catch the light so that I could see exactly where I needed to go. And you can see that I'm moving it around from one end to the other so I don't burn the powder, but I don't want to miss any of it either. Now that's it finished and there's quite a bit of shine there. So I'm satisfied with that. This is from the stamp set from Stampin' Up! It's lots of Love. And I'm using this sentiment, Sending Lots of Love. I really like the script. So I'm going to put this on the smaller card. And this is the same routine using an embossing tool or powder tool to take off the oils and then stamping it with Versamark ink. So I'm going to tap that on and close the door of the stamp positioner. Just wiping a little bit off the edge that over inked. Giving it some pressure. And that doesn't have any problem at all with any of the powder sticking to it where it shouldn't this time. So I'm going back and doing the same technique I did with the first card. I've got that brush ready if I need it to brush any powder away, but this came off clean. When you're working with watercolour paper, especially heavy watercolour paper like this, which is 140 pound or 300 GSM powder, you have to take a little bit of extra care. I'm just having a look at that stamp next to it to make sure I haven't missed anything and it did stamp perfectly and the powder landed just exactly where it needed to go. I'm just going to give it a light brush in case there's a spare bit of powder anywhere on the card. And I'm going to start on the back again so that it won't buckle with the heat tool and the same process. So clear embossing powder works really well for this technique. If I was to use white embossing powder with this technique, it would look quite stark against the color of the paper. You can see how nicely that has set. It's nice and wet, which is what you want. Just going around any little edges, just to make sure you've got the tops and the bottoms of letters or the edges of the card there. And that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to tape these to my desktop so that I can paint them. And I'm using some QZ tape or QZ tape that I bought from the dollar store, which is like a masking tape. You can see I'm taking the tack off on my clothing first. This will ensure that it doesn't tear the card when I come to take it off. So I've got them both taped down to my work surface and we're ready to bring in some paints and start colouring. So these are my Ganzai Tambi paints. This is the 36 set. And you can see I have some colours in a colour chart on the left hand side. I made this colour chart myself just using some washi tape. These are the three colours I have my eye on. So we have turquoise blue, um, malachite and cobalt violet. And it does come with a colour chart that you can make yourself, but I tried that and I just couldn't find any of the colours. I wanted to make something really nice. Now you can use this plastic sheet if you have a set of these as your palette. You can mix on that directly if you want to. But I'm going to bring in my conch palette, which is a ceramic palette, and use that for my mixing. There's malachite, turquoise blue, and cobalt violet are the three colours I've chosen. I have some clean water. I have a mop brush. I have some paper towels. And I'm just going to wash some clear water over the first card. And I'm going to very gently tap it with a paper towel just so that there are no puddles anywhere. It's glossy, but it's not dripping wet. I'm going to be adding quite a lot of water to this because this is a mop brush. And as the name suggests, it holds water really, really well. So it's going to be a very wet wash that goes over this. And already you can start to see 
some of that clear embossing is showing up under the colour. Now you can take these little palettes out of the box and you don't have to worry about putting them back in the wrong spot because they do have the number and the colours on the side and the back of them. So you can put them in their right posy when you're finished with them. I'm going to do the same on this card that I did on the first and I'm working very quickly. I don't want these cards to dry. So I'm working wet on damp paper. So I'm doing the same technique here with the smaller card and you can see that embossing starting to show through that emboss resist. Now I'm bringing in the blue. So this is the turquoise blue. And I'm just putting it around the card where I think it needs to go. Keeping it very loose and very free, which is my favorite way to watercolor. And like magic, the greeting is starting to appear. Now I'm washing my brush in clear water between each change of color. And this is the cobalt violet. It's a really pretty color. It's beading up a little bit there. So I'll get a little bit more pigment on my brush. There you go. You can see the color a little bit better that way. And when it goes on, it's quite vibrant. Now I don't want the color all the way to the ends of the cards. I'm not trying to make a border around them. I just want the color to be in the center and certainly covering where the sentiment is because that's what's making the sentiment legible. So just dotting it here and there very loosely, lots of water in my mop brush, but you can see it's it's also quite a nice strong pigment. I do like the Ganzo Tabi paints for this reason. They are a cross between watercolour and gouache, so they have a very strong vibrant colour to them. So depending on the watercolour paints that you're using, you want to make sure that you get enough vibrancy in there so that you've got lots and lots of colour when you're finished. Now I'm just bringing in a round brush and I'm going to do some splashes just on the right hand card, just on the birthday wishes card. And I really like this effect. I think it looks great. I'm using each of the three colours and splashing over the top. And the card on the left, I'm going to leave clear. Now I'm going to do some drying off and I had a look at the card on the left, sending lots of love and the pigment isn't strong enough there. So I'm bringing in some more water and I'm dropping in color. And my idea for this card is I'm going to create some deliberate blooms or cauliflowers. So I'm going to do that by adding water and dropping pigment into the center of it. And you can see this is darkening the pigment and it's also knocking back some of that purple. That purple was starting to look way too strong for the other colors. So by bringing in some more pigment to the blue and the malachite, you can see that it's starting to even out that card and the purple is not quite so bossy. So I keep drying it with my heat tool as I go and this is helping to create those cauliflowers. The water is drying and creating these beautiful blooms and I just think they're beautiful. I think they're gorgeous. I love them. I'm only creating them on the left card. The card on the right is more like splashes of colour. Now I'm dropping in some water on the tip of my brush just to intensify that effect of the blooms. And I'm dabbing it off on my paper towel so that I can remove some of the pigment and just keeping it water on the brush. And this is really creating a lovely effect. I just love it. Now I'm going to let those dry. And I'll bring in my heat tool as well. Now that it's dry, I've got a tissue and I'm just wiping off that embossing powder where it has a little bit of paint still on top of it. There's only a small amount of paint left, but I don't want to dry it too much and then melt the powder.
Now it's time for the reveal. So I'm very carefully taking the masking tape off. I'm holding it close to my tabletop rather than lifting it straight up and this avoids any tearing. But remember that I took the tack off on my clothing first so I'm not too nervous about this tearing at all. And look at those blooms. They are wonderful. I just love them. Lots of interest in the background, sending lots of love. You can see those blooms and how I've created them deliberately. And I just think it looks gorgeous. So let's have a look at the second card. I'm just going to mop up my tabletop where I splattered everywhere. You can see how carefully I'm taking off the tape, holding it close to my table. And I do love the effect that the splashes have on this and the fact that these are two very different cards, even though they are the same colorways, I have treated them in a different way. This one is more just splashes. No cauliflowers there, just splashes of color and then small splatters in the background. So that's a fun technique if you haven't tried it before. Embossing and using resist with watercolor cards gives you the opportunity to make a lot of different backgrounds and I think that's the fun. So if you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you gave me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. It means you won't miss any future videos. I'm so glad you joined me today. I hope you have a wonderful week and that's all for now. Bye.